Welcome back, this is Captain Cowboy here with another video for the 26 to 29 range guide for stats. Before we get too far into this, it's going to be talking about airship as well as lord level, troop formations, and then if you're a spender, what to look for in your guards. So without much further ado, a guide for what level your airship should be in this range. I'm going to highly recommend that you have at least a level 45. If you're going to be a non-spender, try to get this. Non-low spender. If you're a mid-spender, um, try to start working a little ways up from 45, maybe like around 50. And if you're going to be a spender, try going towards like level 55. This way, you're enabling yourself the best opportunities to increase your stats and your skills from this. You're going to be getting some of those level 21 plus skills which unlocks that second tier, which is a huge bonus. But more so than anything else, it's the parts. This is where you're enabling most of your parts to unlock that third skill, which is going to be at a skill level of 20. Now, if you watch my last video in the 22 to 25 range for airships, I actually go through and show you all how to unlock the skills that you need, um, the levels that you'll need from your parts for the distance attack based on how to manipulate which skills meet the requirements for that part and in order to maximize your stats on a lower level airship. So if you're going to be at the level 45, you unlock every single stat, um, skill level possible. So you're going to be able to have all the slots open increase your percentages. If you're going to be at like level 50, you're going to get start getting towards more skills on having that level 20 ability to unlock that third range for your parts. And then if you're at level 55, you're just going to be tacking on even more levels. Now I say 50, but I actually mean 51. If you have 51, that's where you want to be because more skills unlock a new level at a odd level. Um, that might be pretty confusing, confusing based on how I worded it, so I'm going to go ahead and show you. If you look at this, level 67 unlocks a higher level for this skill. Level 67 as well. Level 67 as well. March of Fury is also level 67 as well. So if you look at it, okay, we're getting higher levels. At the, we're getting more skills being able to unlock at a odd level than we do at even level. It's actually like a 5 to 2 thing or something like that. Something weird, something I don't understand, whatever. Keep your airship at a odd level if you're going to be increasing them abnormally. Again, if you're not fighting, keep your airship in a balanced set up this way in the balance setup you're increasing the amount of assault and guardian points you're going to be gaining and it will allow you to get to higher skill levels moving forward lord level pretty self-explanatory i don't want to get you know take up too much time in this video as there's a lot to cover um go through take a look at what you lack in and fix that you know increase what you lack in take the best ideas, take, take the routes that will give you the most useful levels possible. If you realize you're getting too far and you're not going to be able to fill up the last um, piece and it's not really a good stat, circle back and fill in other good stats that you passed over. So now let's go ahead and get into troop formations. All right. So let's go ahead and set up a march formation for a level 26 to 29 player. So based on the information that I've gathered from my man, Family Man 420, he has a march capacity of 126,000. So not everyone's going to have the same number. I know. Please bear with me as I'm going to try to give you 
what an idea most likely based on an average number for a actually level 25 player. So if you're level 26, it sh you should have a little higher march capacity. If you don't, maybe you miss something when you're building your account. Go back, take a look, try to see what you're lacking on. Madame Illinois, four stars. Yeah, get her. If you're going to be a spender, that is. So I'm just going to go ahead and zero out all of my march that I have set up so far. And this takes a long time. I apologize in advance. All right, and we are done. So, if you're level 26 to 29 range, you have T9s. I'm gonna assume at your level, you have all T9 buildings done. And you're starting to stock up on them. Now, all of these march setups, we're gonna be utilizing our airship. Your main march, your best march, should always have your airship in it. If you're going to be a spender and you're really high level, consider getting the mercenary airship so that every single march has your airship, which will gain you about 100 to 200% stats at my level. So going through, we know, okay, T9 infantry, Versus, well, T9 cavalry versus T8 cavalry, they're opposite tiers. Same with T9 to T8 infantry, and same with T9 to T8 distance. So with that being said, I know that they're going to be opposing tiers. One is going to stand in front of the other. Now what I like to do is I'm going to like to get a good healthy amount. <laughs> and I only have 767 T8 infantry. So... We have about 26 to 30,000 of each of these first, our top tiers. You'll notice I have a good healthy amount of infantry, a little lower on cavalry, and a good healthy amount pretty similar to our infantry level. On this uh, T8 infantry, I would recommend that you have at least 5,000. So right now we're at 77,000. I'm going to call that... 82,000. We're going to be a little lower in the distance, you know, not really necessary because we want the best, we want more troops at that higher tier. But with this, we just want the offset ability. So now we're at 91,000. And we just want to go ahead and go down the line and do about a thousand or less of each type of troop going down the line. Distance is going to be a little lower than others, and that's okay. That's really what we want to look for. So you'd go down the line and your march would start looking something like this. If you're done with that and you realize, okay, I'm at 97,000 troops. Keep in mind, I'm missing 5,000 T8 infantry. I want to go back and I want to say, okay, I have 20, about 20,000, 25, 26,000 troops remaining that I can put in. Let's go ahead and break that down into 5,000 each of our top tiers. So with that being said, I want to go ahead and I want to make this infantry about 30,000. My cavalry to be about 26,000. And this to be about 34,000 for my T9 distance. Moving forward to infantry, I'd probably make this from 5,000 to 7,000, maybe 10,000. And then here at 7,500, and then here 
just a little lower around 5,000. If you still have more troops left over, consider equalizing your cavalry a little higher. And that would look like your march setup pretty much across the board, no matter what your stats are like for a city level 26. Now, if we're going to be talking about spenders, a great place to start, besides already talking about the equipment and our gemstones, is going to be our guards. So, we have to keep in mind we have new guards. Depending on what, how much you're looking to spend, I highly recommend that you get some of these quote unquote hot guards. These hot guards are fan phenomenal. I highly recommend that you think about getting them. Now, I wouldn't go ahead and say get Benoit right off the bat. If you're going to be maxing him out at 5 stars, get Benoit. Make him 5 stars before anyone else. That's my opinion. Captain Treble, Treble is amazing. One, zero stars, you know, one star, two star, three star, four star, five star, phenomenal. That is a great option to go ahead and get. Blanchett, again, phenomenal all across the board, all five. However, I would highly recommend you get Captain Travel above Blanchett because you could get Madame Lenoy. What I do is I use Madame Lenoy, a free guard, and her march capacity at four stars. I march with her, and then I'll go ahead and switch over to Blanchett before my march hits. Or if I'm used sitting in KVK, I'll sit like that for a while. If we were going to get Kitty, hold off on her. This shoe would be like one of the last. I had a three-star Colonel Asserts, and I said, well, he's only defense. No one attacks me. People attack me in KVK, and that's when I'm on defense. However, this is a state kind of stats, so it's not going to affect KVK at all. So Kitty's good in this situation. She's phenomenal, especially at level 50. However, I don't want three stars. That's $400 to get something I don't want. Four stars. So now we're talking $800 for something I don't want. I want her at five stars. Yes, I do. I really do. But that's at an extreme cost for 50%. So that's why I'm holding her at two stars. Now if you look at Durangatan, I replaced him over Gustavus Dolphus, who is a great, great guard. I'm a higher spender. So I decided that Durangatan was going to be a good idea. However, at this range area, I would highly recommend that if you're going to be spending, spend on some fragments to get Gustavus Dolphus a uh, higher level. I hope you guys enjoyed this. This pretty much sums up the guards pretty quickly. Um, again, as always, let me know if you guys have any questions. I love helping you all. Thank you all for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and stay up to date with all of the latest uploads. This is Captain Cowboy.